Welcome back to Wichita Liberty TV. I'm Bob Weeks. I think you know that I'm critical of government planning. But people tell me, Bob, you just don't understand. Today's economy is complex. We've grown beyond a simple agrarian economy where most people lived and worked on farms. Government has to plan our economy or nothing will be accomplished. Well, this criticism is partly, uh, partly correct. The modern economy is tremendously complex. For example, the amount of cooperation required to produce something as simple as a pencil is overwhelming. No single person, no government agencies knows how to make a simple lead pencil. But somehow pencils are made, and they are so inexpensive that the average worker needs to work less than one minute to buy one. How does this happen without a government agency to oversee the process? Well, here's a video based on a short essay titled I Pencil, written by Leonard Reed in 1958. This video was made by the Competitive Enterprise Institute, and it's about six minutes in length. The video and supplementary material may be found at ipencilmovie.org or also through CEI's website at cei.org. Well, here's the movie version of I Pencil. I hope you will learn as much from it as I have. This is the world we live in. If we weren't surrounded by it every day, if we didn't take it for granted, we'd be dumbstruck by its very intricacy and brilliance. This is an ordinary, familiar wooden pencil. You might think a pencil is simple, Chances are you've been using one since before you could even read or write. But just because it's familiar doesn't mean it's simple. In fact, it's complicated, elaborate, beautiful, elegant. Its very existence is too improbable for any one person to truly comprehend. These are the basic materials that go into a pencil. Graphite, cedar, metal, and rubber. But if you had all the elements of a pencil right in front of you, could you make a pencil? It's not as easy as you might think. In fact, no single person on the face of the earth could do it without the help of countless others. And this is the key to understanding the world. A pencil, just like you and me, is the end result of a vast and intricate family tree, a symphony of human activity that spans the globe. Through their work and knowledge, a vast number of people have had a hand in making this simple pencil. Unlike your family tree, this one begins with an actual tree. The most immediate ancestor of the pencil is a cedar tree in the Pacific Northwest, but the loggers who harvest the timber are also its ancestors. And these men don't work alone. They, in turn, are assisted by the people and industries that produce the saws, rope, and countless other tools that they use. These are also the ancestors of our pencil. As is the waitress at a nearby diner who sells the loggers lunch, to say nothing of the thousands of people involved in producing that simple midday meal. Across time and space, the web grows. Consider the roads, trucks, ships, communication systems, and the people who design, build, and maintain them. All of them are necessary to bring the lumber to the mills and the slat factories that process them. All of them are also the ancestors of the pencil. And even with the work of all these people, so far all we have is a stained wooden slat, a naked half of a wooden body of a pencil. But its family tree is larger and more extensive. The graphite is mined in China and Sri Lanka. At the pencil factory, it's mixed with clay and heat and other materials before it's extruded, 
dried, and baked in a kiln. People from different continents, different cultures, cooperate to bring these materials together with waxes and kilns and equipment from across the world. These too are the ancestors of the pencil. And the same is true of the eraser. With ingredients from around the world, it's the end result of a similarly complex and exotic branch of the family tree. As is the ferrule, the metal band made from material that is mined, refined, and shipped from all over the world. Each part of the pencil is the result of the collaboration and cooperation of millions of people. Together, they form a process that is constantly changing and adapting. A change in the availability or cost of material from one place might make another source more desirable, and the process changes and adapts fluidly. And there is a fact that's still more astounding. The absence of a mastermind, of anyone dictating these countless actions which bring a pencil into being. Each member of this family tree supplies only a small amount of the necessary know-how needed to make a pencil. They do so voluntarily, not because they necessarily want pencils or like pencils, but because by working to create them, they exchange their labor and skills for the wages that let them buy what they want and need. What you're seeing is the market at work. The spontaneous configuration of creative human energies, of millions of people with their various skills and talents organizing voluntarily in response to human necessity and desire, as if led by an invisible hand to promote an end which was no part of the intention. Every second we are alive, we benefit from the products of voluntary, spontaneous cooperation. This is the modern world. It's miraculous, it's intricate, and it gets better every day, so long as people are free to interact with each other. If we can leave the creative energies of humankind uninhibited, there's no limit to what we can accomplish.